In past programs, we've had the opportunity to meet one of my karate instructors, what we call a sensei in the martial arts, Mr. Joe Lewis. And we've also discussed one of our past instructors, Mr. Walt Bone. Today, I'm very excited to welcome to our program my success sensei, and the success sensei of thousands of others. Please welcome USA Karate, Mr. Tony Robbins. Thanks, John. Very nice to be with you. Uh, Tony, I, of course, I'm extremely familiar with your material. I would consider myself a green belt in the <laughs> <AC>. <laughs> Okay. And, uh, but some of our viewers might not be. And what I'd like to do is establish a, a point of reference and go back in time a little bit to a, a rainy Christmas Eve yes. that might be able to establish that um, you know anybody can accomplish, anybody can achieve. Yeah. And uh, I'd like you to share with us a little bit about your background because it's quite remarkable. Okay. The, the, I basically, uh, as you know, start out uh, Christmas Eve. Uh, there were quite a few challenges in my family's background. And on Christmas Eve, I got kicked out of my house. Mm. My dad got kicked out, too. My mom didn't know martial arts, but you would have thought so. <laughs> she was a pretty powerful lady. And my dad went back east, and I was on my own. And yeah. um, I had to figure out what I was going to do. And my mom and I are super close now. It's one of the best things mm -hmm. ever happened to me. But what it made me have to do is figure out what I was going to do with my life. And I really always believed that, you know, I'd read a lot of books and I'd always been feeding my mind mm -hmm. and feeding my body to really become a successful individual because I grew from a great deal of poverty and a great deal of friction. I think that initially drove me. Mm -hmm. um, but I, and I started studying like it was going out of style. I really wanted to be quote unquote successful. I thought that was me. And then I made lots of money, and then I realized I still wasn't happy. So uh, right. I began to, began to sabotage myself because I was, I was disillusioned. Here you mm -hmm. were, you, if you made money, everybody's supposed to love you, and it was supposed to be happy, and you're going to live forever and ever and be you know, just the way you want life to be. And here I was, all of a sudden, I come back to my friends and go, hey, you know, let's go out, and I want to go with you, and let's, mm -hmm. let's fly to, like, uh, Africa, or let's go to Egypt, and let's raid camels between the pyramids and stuff. And they were all excited about this, you know. I said, no, I'll pay for it. And, and I was asking people, yeah, it's easy for you. And, and then I started getting all these negative associations money. So I went through this tailspin mm -hmm. where around 1981, 21, 22 years old, I found myself in a position where, you know, I'd given up. I, I got rid of all the people around me. I lost my ass. I stopped showing up for key meetings. Mm -hmm. I was harsh to people. And I ended up being broke, living in a foot square foot bachelor apartment in Venice, California. Mm -hmm. but not because I wanted to meditate, but because that's what I was living, you know. <laughs> and washing my dishes in the bathtub and waking up each day, eating my guts out, because that was my way of changing my emotions. I didn't know how to do it with my body. Mm -hmm. And I didn't know how to do it with my mind. I used my body through food. And I also went out, I mean, you know, I knew, I know the whole story of Luke and Laura in General Hospital. <laughs> I watched it every day. And, but eventually what happened was I hit rock bottom. You know, I hit that level that I think most martial artists sometimes have to meet before they demand more from themselves. Threshold. You know, exactly, what I call mm -hmm. an emotional threshold. And at that point, I did what we all have to do. I raised my standards. I had to, because yeah. I realized that who I was was much more than what I was demonstrating. That's and true. some people have to hit rock bottom in a harsh way, and some people just have to realize they're better than everybody else around them, but yeah. that's not good anymore for anymore. Yeah. You can't evaluate your performance by the people around you and expect to really grow. You've mm -hmm. got to always be holding yourself to a higher standard. Mm -hmm. That's how you really become a master at anything. Mm -hmm. And so I raise my standards, but you know, I watch martial artists all the time raise standards and say, oh, this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to do this thing and I'm going to make this thing happen. I'm going to achieve this. I'm going to accomplish that. I'm going to execute this way. Mm -hmm. But they don't believe they can really do it. Gotcha. And so if you raise your standards and you don't change your beliefs, it's over. You've already sabotaged yourself. Mm, really have. And so I realized I had to work on my beliefs, so I started looking for role models because I figured if somebody else can do it mm -hmm. and they start out like me, I can do it too. So mm -hmm. I started with simple things. Who's fat like me or was, rather, and became thin and stayed thin you mm -hmm. know, over the years? And I realized they weren't just going on a diet. They had developed a discipline. They developed a new way of focusing. Food was no longer their emotional outlet. Mm -hmm. They found something else to invest themselves in, mm -hmm. and so I began to do that. And I looked around and saw people who had been broke like me, started yeah. with nothing and become wealthy, and there were hundreds and hundreds mm -hmm. of role models. And I did the same thing. I mean, less than 12 months, I transformed my relationships. In a month, I lost 30 pounds, and wow. 60 days, 38. I went from totally broke to a million dollar net worth. I moved from my 400 square foot bachelor apartment to the home I have now, which is literally a castle built in 1925 overlooking the ocean. So my message is simple. Mm -hmm. My book is Awaken the Giant Within. We all have the power, but what stops us is our limiting beliefs. Mm -hmm. We don't raise our standards. We don't change our beliefs. We have begun to believe that we can't do things because we get so disappointed so much of the time. And the last thing, though, is you can have this great standard and you can believe all day long but the metaphor I often use is, you know, you can be all positive and believing and have all this willpower, yeah. but if you're running east looking for a sunset, then you've got a problem. I don't care how enthusiastic you are, how disciplined you are. It's the wrong way to go about it. Mm -hmm. And I think the same thing is true in martial arts. Yeah. You see people raise their standards. You see them sometimes get enough belief, mm -hmm. but their training discipline, for example, is never going to produce the result. Or they're really not modeling with excellence their sensei. They're not modeling not only the physiology. 
but the core philosophy of the teachers that they're working with. Critical point, and this is what we call black belt excellence, and, and fans of our program are very familiar with this. The whole idea being that the, the, the discipline that we learn in karate, the concentration skills we learn in karate, even the respect and treat each other we learn in the karate school, has no value if it does not carry over into our regular lifestyle. So it is truly, you have to, you have, to have the core belief that this is the, my new lifestyle. This is the way I like it. And it doesn't happen overnight. No, it doesn't. And I think, you know, when I went to go get my black belt, um, Grandmaster June Ri, mm -hmm. who's um, kind of a father of Taekwondo in the United States, um, he and I met, and he was a big fan of mine, and I became a very big fan of his very quickly uh, when I got to meet him. Not so much because of his martial arts skill, although that's impeccable, mm -hmm. but because of who he is as a person. Yeah. And um, I originally didn't want to study Taekwondo, I wanted to study Aikido. Okay. But I had the chance to study with him personally, and he yeah. traveled with me, and I traveled with him. And, and, but the goal was to break a record, you know, yeah. do this thing in eight and a half months, and just train more intensely and make it so that I could absolutely be with any, the best of them and produce a result. Well, we did that, but in the process of doing it, I overtrained. Yeah. You know, and I didn't. I I was going for absolute what I considered excellence, but mm -hmm. I didn't pay attention to health. Mm -hmm. And to me, our discipline is really a discipline that is a holistic discipline. It is mind, body, and spirit, and we all talk about that. But it's one thing to talk about; it's another to live it. And then I watch a lot of martial artists mm -hmm. who throw their pendulum, and it becomes all about breaking bricks or yeah. breaking people or or dominating the next person. Feeding and that's ego. not it. Exactly, mm -hmm. it's yeah. all feeding the ego. Right. And, and I fell into that a little bit. I have to tell you honestly. So what I've tried to do is is, you know, it's there's nothing wrong with with uh, getting off balance. Mm -hmm as long as you return to center. And so learning you know, experience. And, and exactly. And my big belief is that success in life in anything, whether it be martial arts or your life, comes from good judgment. Mm -hmm. Good judgment comes from experience. It really does. And experience, yeah. though, often comes from bad judgment. <laughs> you know, <laughs> it's the only if you way learn from it, you know, you're, hopefully you don't have to learn by bad judgment, yeah. but you're going to in some cases.